Hello everyone, it's Bob Buter with Lesson 4 for the Fall Meditation Course. Beyond Positive Thinking is the title, or Pure Thinking. This lesson gets at the core of the way we look at the world and perhaps flips it beyond itself. Not necessarily flips it on its side, but literally beyond. Let me explain. If it's raining, most of us find that troubling. We have to wear you know, a raincoat and an umbrella, and we newscaster says, well, today it's raining, friends, and the farmers are happy, but, well, you know, I'm trying to make a positive spin for you all. That would be what the rather man says. Or he just says flat out, it's raining, it's a tough day, but tomorrow's going to be sunny. So you see, we have this negative positive deal. Most of us, those taking a meditation course, have spent a lot of time moving away from negative thoughts into positive thoughts. So-and-so is such a pain in the neck, that's a negative thought. Well, you know, I can put up with so-and-so. Um, I understand why he acts a certain way. Well, that's kind of a positive, but I'm still judging the guy, and I technically don't like him, but I'll look at it in a positive way. Well, that whole dynamic, positive, negative, there's always a tension. See? It's a flip side. They say positive and a negative thought are the same side, different sides, excuse me, of the same coin. You see? Without the negative, you wouldn't need the positive. If you just said so-and-so's an ornery guy, that's a fact. Or he's, you know, a little bit nuts half the time. Okay, that's a fact. That's a pure thought. Something that states reality as it is. Um, or you might say the person who's very annoying uh, is somebody that you feel a lot of compassion for because of their background that caused them to act in a certain way in public situations and they get themselves somewhat embarrassed and your friend and embarrasses you. So you say so-and-so in public situations is awkward. See that's pure. There's no resistance in my mind. I'm not making up for my negative thought. I'm not judging. I'm just stating things as they are. Even if they're not that great. Now if something's really good I love that. I want that. Do you see the affect in me? If I don't have that, I won't be happy anymore. So somebody, you know, grabs at the thing they like, and then as soon as they don't have it, they're unhappy. So once again, that's positive negative pull. So we're using the word positive in that way, and the word pure would mean, hey, that food's really good for me. I'd like some more. Versus I have to have some more. You see, there's a much, there's more peace when you get into this pure thinking. Now, this has roots back to childhood when every single person asked you when they saw you, hi, little guy or hi, little girl, what do you like? And you were taught to like and dislike things. I mean, even two-year-olds, do you want some more of this? Did you like it? And the two-year-old looks up, doesn't maybe even understand the definition of the word like. Like, what does it mean to like and dislike when you're two years old? You know, sure, the two-year-old can say no to just about everything, but can they really reason and make a choice between like and dislike? But we're constantly asking them that. And a person's personality is built on the things they like to do and the things that they avoid and they don't like to do. So our entire thinking is like that. So then somebody sits down to meditate and they have an errant thought go through and they don't like it. So guess what happens to their meditation? So if we can't take care of some little things <clears throat> like the weather or the different stresses that we have and accept them, how would we ever be able to meditate? I feel like I'm proving a point here, making a case, but I'd like you to look at the list here and draw up some of your own likes and dislikes and try to understand what they're really about. Similar to lesson two when we talked about stress management and things being neutral, most of the things that we like are neutral, we just choose to like them. And as we do that, we create all kinds of rifts in our mind and all kinds of uh, brainwave activity. So once again, I say we're, we're barreling down here to go somewhat deep in your psyche to understand why you react to life the way you do and to try to figure out the difference between like and dislike 
to realize that when you're pure, you're free. When you're free, you're more vibrant. Now, it will often seem like the person that's pure and free, who doesn't have a charge around things, is dispassionate. Well, what we say is the dispassionate person's mind is very clear, which allows them to actually be more passionate. Hopefully that's not too paradoxical and you can get into this in class. Again, study this lesson and see what you discover. I think you're going to find that your mind gets really stable if you can understand and purify a few of these likes and dislikes and really discover what we mean by pure thinking. Have a great lesson.